game, not just in the third. We saw three or four different coverages on book uh, in the first half. We knew they were going to throw the kitchen sink at him, uh, and they did. And um, you know, during that third, we had some possessions where you know their defense slowed us down. We had some possessions where we got clean open looks and missed them. We shot over eight from the three. So uh, just a, a stretch where we got cold, and um, you know, it was a costly quarter. Curious, Nurkic was out for most of that quarter. What was going on with him? Yeah, he got hit in the nose. They went in the back to be uh, he just evaluated for. Facial injuries, concussion, and and um, you know, came out came out clean. Um, just had to play through discomfort. Right. Uh, was able to finish the game. I, I'm curious, you know, when the game started getting testy and then guys get frustrated, how do you try to calm it down? Even though I know you're getting involved with it as well and getting frustrated with how the game was maybe being called there. Yeah, you just have to have a you know a steady mindset, you know, and a calm demeanor, and uh, you got to remain focused in those situations. Did you see that a little bit with Book, especially with the different coverages that he was getting tonight? Well, for sure with the other guys out, you know, with uh, no KD, no Brad, no Grayson. Um, you know, we, we knew we were going to have to ask him to do a lot, and they knew that, you know, he was he was going to be the centerpiece of everything we did. So, you know, they really uh, threw a lot of bodies at him and uh, it made things difficult for him. So, you know, we still had a chance. You know, I thought we played a, a, a solid first half. I thought we fought and competed in the fourth to hang in there. I was proud of how uh, you know our guys competed, uh, but the margin for error is very small when you got got so many guys out and you're playing so many different combinations and having on a having on the floor together with each other. So um, you know it just wasn't enough. You guys had limited De'Aaron to 11 points through three quarters. He got loose in that fourth. What did you see in terms of not being able to contain? That's his time. Yeah, he's one of the best in the league at crunch time and and in the fourth and. Uh, we also threw a, a number of different coverages out, out there at him. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the ball finds Sabonis, who's another elite playmaker, and they got shooting, you know, all over the floor. So uh, there's a big reason why they were uh, one of the best teams in the West last year. And, um, you know, we weren't able to slow, slow down the rest of those guys while trying to slow down Fox. Coach, you said you were proud of the way that the guys did compete, just met to and what he was able to do, um, making the most of his opportunity out there. Yeah, he, he played well, did some good things. Um, you know, none of our guys played mistake-free, but Emezi was one of those guys who was uh, making a lot of effort plays, you know, and uh, that's what we say when, when we have, uh, you know, extended minutes for uh, role players. You know, there's extended opportunity for the energy hustle, pl hustle types of plays, and that's how you have to win. That's how we won in New York game. That's how we won in Memphis. And, um, you know, I encourage those guys to all uh, contrib contribute to the game, you know, in their own way, and Mezzi was great with that. Frustrating was it to, you know, after you give up a bunch of offensive rebounds last game, not nearly as much this game, but they seem to be timely there in the fourth. Yeah, game. definitely timely and a lot of bad bounces. I mean, we, we, we have to get better with our box out commitment. You know what I mean? Uh, something we're talking about, and, um, you know, we're pushing our guys to be better. Um, you know, but when we did do it, like there was a few in the fourth where, you know, there's only one place the ball could have bounced that we wouldn't get it, and that ball bounces that way. So, you know, that's the game of basketball, but, you know, overall our defensive rebounding and our, our commitment to hit people in pursuit of basketball, we lost through three or four loose balls too, you know, that we were steps step slow to, and you got to make those plays to win games. Have you gotten an update on Nas outside of the concussion? Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's being evaluated uh, for the concussion. So another, another tough loss. I mean, we lost two guys after having a bunch of guys out. We lost two guys for stretches of the game, Nas for the whole game, and, and Nurk for that critical stretch in the third. Um, you know, but we'll see where he's at tomorrow. I think we missed some good looks. Um, you know, they threw a couple of junk defenses out, boxing one, um, trapping at half court. And, you know, we got we got good looks, and you know, we have to take those shots and make them. Curious, you obviously dealt with all kind of defenses, but what you know, when the trap's coming and, and the big is coming off of Nurkic, what's the best way to attack that? Uh, I mean, you make the right play. Um, get off the ball, and then you play four on three on the back side. You feel like you guys did that well tonight? Or yeah, we did it. We just didn't make the open looks. Um, and it's a make-miss league. 
you know, we have to take those shots, you know, whether you're open or not. I mean, you can find ways to, to cut. I think Mazzy cut one time, and I found him on the live back door. Um, but, yeah, it's just junk defenses. You know, when Chris was here, he would talk about kind of the physical toll of bringing the ball up the court every time. Has that been an adjustment at all for you, especially when you are facing, you know, blitzes and traps like that? I mean, we I think we diverse it. Right at today where, you know, I was getting off the ball some too, but, you know, when they play those defense, when they're playing on the top side, you know, I become a screener then. And, you know, that's the same thing as if they trap me with the ball, you know, you just play four on three on the backside and take the open three or get a layup. Did you get an explanation on the flavored foul? No. Yeah, does it seem like whenever you're on the verge of getting one guy back, you lose another and if so, how frustrating is that? It's part of it. I mean, you have to deal with it. I mean, it's part of an NBA season. We're not going to be the only team that deals with injuries um, throughout. So, you know, the good teams find a way to win, you know, when they're down players. And we had an opportunity to do that tonight, um, going up nine, going into halftime. And, you know, we come out with a better third quarter. You know, I think we could have put this one away. Devin, the um – the, the, the flagrant ones, uh, how much did you guys not, I don't want to say not respond to that well, but just how much did that add to the frustration in the fourth quarter that, that led to what happened tonight? Um, I mean, it's I mean it's just so inconsistent. Uh, L.A., I got put in a baby headlock, and then I got hit in the head. And the past three, four years that I can remember, that's always been a flagrant, whether it was intentional or not. A shot to the head is, is a flagrant. And, they didn't even look at it um, tonight. He did say, he said, I pulled his shoulder down, and that's not a basketball play. Is it difficult to kind of evaluate where you guys are at this far, given that you haven't seen your full group together and guys have been in and out the way that they have? Yeah, I mean, you guys know just one piece can always, you know, change a team drastically, and, you know, that's not no ordinary piece that we're at neither is Bradley Beal. I mean, me and KD have played together this year, but we haven't had Brad out there. So um, one person can change everything, the whole landscape, the spacing. And, you know, it's, you know, obviously I can keep saying I can't wait till he comes back, but, you know, just make sure he's healthy and ready to go before he does. Well, did you notice um, kind of the lack of, was a late arriving crowd for a couple of reasons, but did it feel like there was a lack of energy in the building? Really? Yeah. I mean, you expected it. it's a makeup game. I mean, you know, we everybody expected us to be in Vegas probably, and you know, there's a concert next door too. So, but it seemed like it pretty got pretty filled by the end. Devin, I know it's tough to evaluate with so many guys out, but how do you feel the spacing principles are around when you're running pick and roll? Um, I mean, it varies game to game. That's what we work on a lot at practice. I mean, we you can go through sets all you want, but then at the end of the shot clock or the end of the play, it comes down to proper spacing. Congrats on the shoe debut. I know you had mentioned you know, it's not the Grand Rapids or Phoenix or somewhere like that. Yeah. How exciting is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's Art Basel down in, in Miami. Um, 500 pairs are releasing. Um, Everybody knows this Nike Nike's idea to to do it in Art Basel, which is you know a global reach and it's important. But you know I'm gonna do plenty of things through my shoe line to you know take care of the hometowns and um, I'll do some exclusive drops here and whatever I can do um, to make sure that you know the true fans you know get some pairs. How much do you enjoy that aspect of the planning part of? Let's do this here. Let's let's do this there. Let's let's, let's make that happen at certain spots. Yeah, it's finally coming to life now. But it's been something that you know they told me two and a half years ago now, and you know the three years before that I was bugging them about it. So you know it's just it really is a dream come true, and you know not with any brand with the with the swooshes. You know it's it's a whole different level. So you know it comes with a lot of responsibility and. Growing up a sneakerhead, you know, I know what the game's about. You know, I know what people want to see. And, 
You know, I just want to tell those stories that people haven't heard before. Is that how long the process took? And with you, were you involved with it from the beginning? Yeah. The design and everything? Well, yeah. Probably too involved, if you ask them. <laughs> but, you know, with, with the simple shoe, you probably don't see that. But, you know, I have, a, I have a lot in store. A lot of colors coming. And, you know, I want to, like I said, take care of the, the right people. And I don't want it to be something that no one can get their hands on. So far, I mean, you got everyone hasn't seen anything, so seen everything. Um, nah, they, they, I mean, they all are their own stories, and that's what I told Nike from the start. You know, I think, you know, shoes is storytelling, and with the name book and sequence in and out with chapter one, chapter two is, you know, a layup. So just having fun with the process. Um, I mean, I think he controls his speed, at, you know, his pace is when he first got in, you know, it was a race to the rim every time. And, you know, now I think he, you know, the game slowed down for him and he picks his spots where he does it. Um, he's not only a killer in transition in the half court offense, you know, it's just hard to stay in front of him. Um, you throw a double team at him, he, you know, he's not always going to make that pass. He'll get around either side of the double team and, make the right play. So, you know, that team rallies behind them well, and, you know, they've been playing great basketball the last couple of years. But how challenging do you find it to remain patient for the entire team to be healthy and, and become the team you all have envisioned it to be ever since the offseason? Uh, you know, I mean, I've been through it before, just understanding. I mean, I obviously would rather it, us be at full strength, but, you know, just remembering what we're playing for and, you know, trying to learn in wins and losses. Um, you know, teams are probably going to try to take out three of us and, you know, other guys are going to have to find spacing and be in those right spots. And here's a good time to, you know, step up in those opportunities and, you know, build some confidence. Eric said he would be worried if this was like game 50. And he's like, it's game 22, I think. But how challenging is it to not worry when you look at the scoreboard, it's like, how do you not be concerned, even though it's early? Uh, look at the bench and see Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant sitting there getting ready to come back out. Thanks, Thanks Yeah.